how you doing everybody welcome to my channel youtube can be great i am painting if y'all didn't see my last video i made i am painting and i have a hot ass mess and you know so i'm sitting up here trying to do this review look at a mess with paint covered all of me because i don't want to miss you know miss doing this so this is the real house of atlanta season 12 so 9 review of wine of a time this episode wasn't that great as far as events go there was only a couple things i want to touch on that are really important next episode is going to be lit as a motherfucker because i guess nini and kenya and eva all and even cynthia they finally me face to face and we're gonna have to see the moment of truth people need answers for what the fuck they were doing it starts off with portia lauren and of course dennis comes off topic portia is talking talking to her sister lauren about going to the car carnival with tanya having been you know a mommy dude for a long time she wants to go and enjoy herself and i can't blame her you know obviously being with a baby waking up all hours of the night being puke all over your ass it ain't sexy she wants to go out and be sexy and have fun and shake her ass and twerk then we got uh she talks about the therapy session she had one good therapy session with dennis when he wanted to give her the fucking ring back or give her a bigger damn a bigger ring and she's considering taking his ass back portia come on now Come on now, if dollar signs are all your ass, see you gonna cheat on your ass again. Mark my words. Then we got Portia wanted to address what Eva said about her uh, when after she told Kenya what that Eva didn't want to bring her kids to her baby shower or her introduction to the baby thing because she didn't she wasn't sure what the energy is gonna be like. And she wants to address it because Marlo and Candy relayed to her that Eva's reads was like she was talking a whole lot of shit more than her just venting her frustration about what um, Portia said. And she wants to address that. Then we got the airport where they all meet up to go to Canada. We got Yovana with her blonde wig. Yovana is doing her best to try and get a peach herself. We know that Tanya don't want a peach. She works hard. She feels like she can be on the show. Not be as messy as Marlo. Be fun, dandy, and beautiful with her beautiful ass body, her beautiful ass personality, her good spirit, and her good soul, and her happy self that comes along on the TV whenever I see her ass. Unlike Yovana, who thinks that she got to be in the center of attention in a wrong way. She got to be that bitch because now she got a shirt on talking about she's that bitch. She had this blonde wig on that I don't think does her justice because I think it makes her face as light as she is with the blonde wig. It seems like it just makes her face disappear a little bit into the color. I don't like it, but it seems like she's trying desperately to step her game up because she wants to now get her peach and she wants to do it by way of Nini. So she showed up to the airport. I'm thinking to myself, the fuck is she doing here? But she there. And Eva's pregnancy storyline shows up with Cynthia, Candy, and the rest. At this point, Nini's not there, but she's been invited. They get on the plane, they get to Canada, uh, they get their rooms. Kent Tanya's planning, make sure that everybody got the same rooms, they don't have to argue. Marlo tried to kiss her ass first because she thought that she'll make her get the fuck the fast room, but Tanya said, that it's just my vacation, I planned this well. You guys all get nice rooms, and the rooms were pretty nice and great views. Then they're in the rooms, you got Candy, Cynthia, and Kenya. They're looking on the damn blogs. And the card that uh, Nini sent Cynthia before she got proposed to last episode, is on the blogs word for word and they're anticipating they're basically speculating that nini after she didn't put that video out there talking shit about cynthia decided to put that card out letting people know that she sent her something nice the irony of it is some side tease that i did watch a clip of next week episode and nini said that she wasn't the one that put the card out there i'm thinking maybe yovana did because y'all remember yovana walked up to cynthia and said did you get nini's card or Nini also said that Cynthia said she had lost the card throughout the party while she was at the wine cellar and she had found it later, which sounds dumb as hell. So I'm thinking somebody somebody leaked it. It's not like she lost it. Somebody leaked that damn shit and put it out there. And I'm thinking it's either Nini or Yovana, one or the other. Okay, it ain't Cynthia. Anyway, they talk about the dinner with Mark and the comfortable of Mark leaving. And it seems like Kenya, I get that Mark leaving her when he's not there all the time. He's off out of the state working and when he comes back, he spends most of his time with his daughter and then he doesn't really spend time with his wife. But at this point, they're not on a good space. So I feel like Mark is not even trying to give Kenya any attention and he's with her because he's not happy in the relationship. Clearly, she's not happy either. They're both feeling the pressure, but she feels like she would like Mark to stay home and spend time with her. But if y'all ain't happy, his time spent will be better spent with people out there that's gonna make him happy, hence the men, the other men. So I don't feel like, I feel like Kenya is, she doesn't want to admit to herself that she made a mistake and this marriage is not going to work. Sometimes you're trying to hold on to somebody that doesn't want to be kept and you're making yourself more miserable. At this point, that's what Kenya is doing. She's crying about a marriage and she feels like she wanted a family, but yeah, you want a family, but you picked the family with the wrong person. You got your baby, yes. And your baby is beautiful. You're always going to be loved, but this wasn't meant to be. I'm looking at both y'all. Y'all are, comp are not compatible at all it may have been happy in the beginning because you know we got the honeymoon phase and stuff like that but now it's past and y'all seeing each other's flaws and really getting a good look at what each other is like and it ain't working let it go 
they then we get to the dancing scene they're trying to learn how to wine you know african style candy's doing a horrible job and i'm thinking to myself candy wasn't a girl group how the hell you know how to dance with you with a girl group that shit don't make no damn sense marlo lost she don't know what the fuck she's doing cynthia cannot move her ass or hips whatever Eva is practicing her, at, like she's a Lama. She's squatting, practicing how she's going to give birth to her baby. We got Portia in the corner twerking because that's what she knows how to do. Tanya is trying her best to move her hips. And <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the hell they were all doing. They were just looking lost. Then we got uh, the next scene. They're at the Ponderosa. Hashtag Jackie Basketball Wives. They're having a Ponderosa meetup with a view. And it's all of them. And Tanya says that Nini took a later flight, but she's here and she's at the bottom floor. They're rolling their eyes. Portia is like, girl, bye. I love Portia's comments. Her, like, re excuse me, her reads, like, in the green screen, Portia gives me life. Girl, girl, watch the baby. It wasn't the last time that she says, her reads crack me up. Portia is funny as hell when she talks. She's the music. And she goes in and she brings up some, uh, brings up the Marlo and Candy to Eva told her what Eva has said and her talking about Dennis and the blogs, talking about her C-section not being healed. Eva does the same thing she does because even when she gets mad, she's on a roll. She talks a lot of shit and then she has selective memory. She don't remember half the shit she says. And even if she don't remember, she's not able to admit it even when two people are sitting there telling her, girl, we heard you. This is what you said. Then the freaking messy ass producers decide to flashback repeatedly of her saying the blogs, the blogs, the blogs. Shady is a motherfucker. Eva don't remember shit. Finally, after uh, Cynthia said, you know what, Eva, you tend to say a lot of shit when you're mad. You don't remember half the stuff that you said, but I don't think that she said it as in you wanted to be cruel. I think you were just upset because Portia had gone to Kenya and revealed something and kind of put it in a way that you didn't want it to be put and it came back to you in a heart in a very bad way and you responded to that. Then Eva said, well, what I did say, and Portia looked at her like, girl, what you remember? You remember now? And I just started dying. That read was funny as a motherfucker. But Eva ended up saying that she didn't mean to hurt her feelings. She was just basically expressing herself I just can't wait to the reunion when they all see what each other was saying and how they're going to respond. That shit's going to be funny as hell. I can't wait for it. Then we got the next topic comes up. Uh, uh, Cynthia addresses Kenya's loose ass mouth and how she basically almost ruined her proposal. And Kenya tried to say that she had a premonition. Bitch, no, you didn't. Stop lying. You tried to lie to Mark. Mark peeped you out and said that you just, you were just, girl, you almost fucked that up. You didn't have no damn premonition. Kenya also said that she told, uh, uh, Kenya also said that she told Kenya about the proposal possibly happening before she comes there. So for Kenya to say that, oh, she didn't mean to and she just assumed that it was going to happen. I don't believe that bullshit because I heard her explanation in the um, previous episode with Mark and I hear her explanation now. She meant to say it. She just didn't mean to hurt Cynthia. She was jealous. She was hurt. Hurt people hurt people, like I said. And she was hurt. And sometimes... Your subconscious does things passive aggressively without you meaning to hurt somebody. It's just how you're reacting because you're trying to vent. You're taking out your frustration on something else. She knew what the fuck she was doing. She doesn't mean to hurt Cynthia. She just did it anyway. So stop making you know excuses and saying that. Just really admit what you did. Because I heard her explain to Mark. I heard her explain to Candy. Why didn't you tell me that you didn't want me to say it? Why didn't you tell me that you didn't want me to say it? And then with Mark, she said, oh, well, Cynthia already knew what's coming. She wasn't really surprised. Now in front of Cynthia, she's saying... I just had a premonition or I just, you know, I, I, I kind of saw it coming. Which is it? There's three different stories, but I don't believe this. Then as just leaks come walking in and of course she makes an entrance and everything just gets sour. You know, you got people not talking, everybody just sipping their drinks. Cynthia's looking down, you know, playing with her hair because she's uncomfortable. Marlo's the only one at Tanya that seems to be welcoming her. Eva's rolling her eyes in the back of her head. Portia's saying, bitch, bye. And then you got uh, e, um, you got Candy, like, look, thinking here, thinking to myself, girl, what else is going to happen at this point? Why are you showing up now? You ain't been here around us this whole time. We're in episode four. You ain't been around. Why now? That is where the episode ends. And I get, you know, the episode was, it was cool, but it wasn't like something I was falling over. It just wasn't. Um, the next week's episode seems to be like it's going to be great. For anybody who says I cuss too much, because I had somebody write in the comments that I cuss too much in my damn videos, bitch, watch something else. Because you can't tell me how to talk. I know how to speak eloquently. I know how to articulate my thoughts very clearly, okay? And if I choose to use cuss words or profanity to get my point across or to express passion and emotion in what I'm saying, that's what I'm going to do. If I choose to use a different form to express myself, that's what I'm going to do. I'm an adult. Ain't no kids around me. 
okay? And I do specify that this is not for kids, it's for grown folk who know right from wrong, who can make the decisions on their own, don't need me to influence their lives, okay? So I'm gonna speak the way I wanna speak, and I hope that if you're gonna watch this, you're able to appreciate the authenticness that is the, you know, the person that I am and when I speak my mind and how I feel about certain situations, okay? Anyway, please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. You guys have a good night. Bye, love you, and happy holidays.